Okay, uh, this is a, a piece for from June 15. Uh, on track to uh, uh, make production in late September, uh, a day after Burns and uh, Rodriguez resigned. Embattled Truck Company is enough funding to operate through May 2022. There will be no disruptions to our day-to-day -day, uh, operations. Um, this is interesting. Uh, Rich Smith said the company needs more experienced leadership. And while Lord Lordstown didn't say the investigation led to Burns and Rodriguez's resignations, he indicated the findings contributed at least in part to their abrupt departures. It was a little bit of both. Now, he said we needed more seasoned leadership. And um, I, I just want to say here that, um, you know, Burns and uh, uh, Burns and uh, old Steve Burns here. Burns and Rodriguez started a car company in 10 months and Get a car off the ground in 10 months. Lucid's been trying to get a car off the ground for 12 years, I think. So uh, these guys are, um, they're, they've had quite an accomplishment here. People are, are diminishing it, but it's just breathtaking uh, how, how, how far they've come in so little time. Like um, what, what it took Lucid a year uh, they did in one month. So uh, I think we got to hand it to them uh, for what they did. Also, I would say in the last, um, you can look at my previous videos, you can see where he received uh, uh, shares, got shares from the company uh, that totaled about 26%. He's the single largest um, shareholder. Those were gift shares that were gifted to him to keep him on board. So this is all very uh, mysterious. Now the the, uh, the CFO also pretty much uh, kept him in the money and, and got all this done and uh, uh, did all right. Now he had some uh, uh, problems getting the report out last month. I think that had to do with <laughs> them uh, doing strategy there but anyway uh, he, I think he may be a sacrificial lamb and I think in many ways Burns is also a sacri uh, sacrificial lamb to get the um, target off their back okay which is uh, you know it is what it is I will say in protest <laughs> uh, I did uh, diminish my position just ever so slightly um uh, single digits percentage because of burns leaving because i am a fan of burns i studied him but anyway this is interesting uh, uh needs more experienced leadership which is you know what does that mean you know the findings contributed they didn't didn't lead to their departure so you know what did and i'll just talk about those findings okay well, let me, let me, uh, I'm not going to bother pulling them up. Here's the thing. You can read through the Lordstown report and the third party investigator they found. Everything Hindenburg said was totally false. Okay. Everything. And the one thing that they brought out was that uh, a number of orders were given to a company that they felt could not afford uh, to buy the trucks. Well, listen. Here's the thing, you know, you, you have the distribution under a curve, right? That's a lousy curve. Here's the median. Here's the left tail. Here's the right tail. This is uh, not not going to not going to buy. This is buy, right? OK, this is the median. Most of the people on this side are going to buy. The tail is definitely going to buy. Uh, it starts diminishing and most of the people here uh, probably aren't going to buy and the tail is definitely not going to buy. Anyway, this is a normal distribution under a curve. Uh, you know, yeah, you're going to have cases in any data set that fall on the left tail. 
you know, how many standard deviations and all that, I forget my math. But the point is, that's number one. Number two, this is a new technology, new technology, never been an electric pickup truck before, never been an electric fleet pickup truck before. Nobody ever tried to sell an electric fleet truck before. Who's to say who cannot pay or will not pay or will pay? What are they basing that on? Okay, uh, I went through a lot of this stuff uh, for some previous videos, and there was one case in particular where there was a couple of guys that were going to start a leasing company, and uh, they were a startup, and they were going to start a leasing company, and they put in orders for a number of trucks, and they said, well, it was kind of a letterhead business, but, you know, a lot of these leasing companies, they never take physical ownership of the trucks. But the point is, so these guys, uh, you know, these young guys are doing a startup, whatever, young girls, and they're going to order these trucks, and they're going to get these orders from these fleets, and they're going to be the middleman, and they're going to uh, take ownership or uh, and lease them to the uh, um, uh, fleet so they can uh, uh, get the tax deduction for the expense, and then they're going to depreciate them, right? And at the end, they're going to auction them off. All right, so they get the orders comes time to do the deals they go to the bank they go here's the orders we got here's the a, a, a receivables we got based on these orders you know loan us some money based on these receivables it's done all the time so anyway I'm I'm a little more lenient on the whole orders thing I don't think Steve Burns uh, and he even mentioned himself and I tried to look up some statistics on this it's, it's it can be difficult actually to break out fleet pickup trucks in and of themselves although I may not have known what I was doing exactly but because uh, it's just kind of lumped together with these big trucks and so forth but uh, the other thing is there are no stats on electric pickup trails sales absolutely none so I would love to know what they based that judgment on um, anyway, the point is, and they paid people for leads. That, I, I went over that in another video. That's, you know, that's like paying a headhunter to find your new CEO. Of course, you're going to pay people to do searches for customers. Anyway, in my opinion. Anyway, uh, that's all I got to say here. Uh, let me uh, see if I can get some more information on this. Okay. Lordstown Motors stops work on electric van to focus on pickup truck. I believe the EV startup said it was accelerating the development of the van in March. Uh, they were putting together uh, the uh, hard metal forms for the stamping uh, in, the, in the conference call, and they said that was part of the expense was running this up. Now, here's the thing. Lordstown Motors has stopped work. Uh, to aim all at, at, at the vehicle. I believe that uh, the the starter preview announced in March of accelerating work, work on the van, but since then, see, he burns and Rodriguez resigning after uh, blah, blah, blah. The thing is, this, uh, and I'm going to go through uh, this on another uh, video link, uh, video segment, but uh, Burns has previously built a high-talk RV uh, to, uh, uh, with 350 miles of range. First mass-produced all-electric RV. Um, here's the thing. That will have to wait. Burns wanted to diversify the product line with this camper, and... Uh, he had entered into, a, we'll go over this in a second, a partnership with Leotis, and uh, Leotis told him he could sell every camper that they made. And when, I, when they say making a camper, based on my personal experience, uh, personal research, so forth on this, you, can, you have to do your own duty. They're building a van. They're building a shell. They might put a, a special electrical system in it that shell is then going to go to a third party and be fitted out as a camper, okay? So uh, what they're building is a van that's going to be turned into a camper. But they, they had let, entered into a joint partnership, with, a joint venture with uh, Leotis to build this thing. And uh, they were also going to build, at a later date, um, 
you know, these trailers like an Airstream t trailer, well, you know, they have uh, propane tanks on them. Uh, when you park them in a remote area, you use the propane to power the stove and the heat or whatever. Uh, Burns wanted to build a battery pack and control system that would be put into the frame of these trailers that were going to be towed so that they would be powered by electricity, okay, uh, rather than propane. And uh, these were both. But uh, I just want to say, pickup truck, I, I did a video on this as well. Uh, pickup trucks are, uh, pickup truck buyers are RV buyers. And I'm going to tell you, Ford knows about this market too, because I owned a Ford pickup truck. Uh, it was a Ford Ranger, I believe. I'm not sure. It was a one-ton truck. I think it was a 250. I'm not sure. Again, I'm not sure about anything anymore after the last video. Anyway, the point is, you know what it was called? It was called a camper special. Because Ford knows this, this uh, th that was back in the day they were making camper specials, okay? This is a big market, and, uh, and it's a big market for pickup trucks. And uh, they were going to sell the endurance pickup trucks. Uh, Camping World has locations in all 50 states, and they were going to use it as a showroom for the truck, and they were going to sell the truck uh, there. And also, this uh, they were pushing ahead on this camper van, which also would have delivery uh, van uh, things. Now, here's the thing. They, uh, let's say the CFO and Burns got this together and they were doing all this and they, they started doing this and everything was hunky dory with the cat. This is one of the scenarios I'm coming up with. Maybe you guys can tell me a better scenario in the comments. I don't know. Anyway, they were all hunky dory. Uh, they had the truck on track for production. And uh, they were doing this van. They got the stamping presses together for it, or they were going to. And everything was working out. And then uh, Hindenburg hit. And what Hindenburg did was it knocked the stock price down with the, this phony report. But that limited them in saving money. Uh, or, I'm sorry, issuing stock because, uh, you know, they would only raise so much money issuing the stock uh, at a lower price and so forth. But the point is, um, the thing that I think did them in, Burns and uh, the CFO, was they had to bring the frame shop in-house. Most of the auto manufacturers, according to my limited research and some comments also from some engineering people uh, that commented on some videos I had made. Uh, it's a very exacting thing to build a frame for a vehicle. Most of the big auto manufacturers farm out their frame development. They don't do it in-house. What happened with uh, Burns, uh, he said, and kind of mumbled under his voice when he was talking about this, uh, two of the suppliers they were working with dropped out, and the third one jacked the price up through the roof that would, you know, just ruin their economics. Now, let me just go down a rabbit hole on this. If they're working for Ford, these frame developers, okay, and, and Sandy Burns did a thing about this, about how, develop, how car OEMs uh, lean on these uh, suppliers, you know. Ford is going to go to them. You want to you want to sell two billion frames to us next year or whatever the number is, then you don't sell them to Lordstown. And then on the third one, they said, "Well, you know what? You raise the price." I'm, <laughs> this is me, okay, but I think this is realistically what could have happened. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> bringing the frame shop in house uh, seems to be the straw that broke the camel's back with the budget. And then uh, the Hindenburg report, uh, which was a totally separate matter. I mean, I think they were totally on track. The Hindenburg report was just a distraction, really. Uh, but then uh, they were in a position uh, raising money, okay? And then dealing with all this SEC stuff and the rest of it. Who knows? Maybe the SEC will find something. I don't think there's very much there. But anyway, uh, this... Uh, that will have to wait while the startup focuses on surviving. We do have a prototype van completed. Ah, ba ba ba. Okay, so 
But okay, later in the summer. But at this point, we are currently focused only on the endurance. President Rich Schmidt said during the automotive uh, event. Now the head of engineering and Schmidt both have made statements in other articles that I've read on this, but they are definitely not doing a camper. They are definitely not working with Camping World. Schmidt also said that a collaboration with RV Company is on hold, okay, which is supposed to involve service centers that would support the van, okay. They, uh, uh, here's one scenario. Okay, uh, that's our goal for the next to make sure we hit our production targets and forward. Okay, the point is, they have aced out uh, Camping World. And, you know, it, it makes me wonder uh, if this, because, uh, you know, I said in a previous video that Camping World was in a, in a position to give them some financial support. I am wondering if uh, Burns was going to announce some kind of financial deal over Lordstown week. This is just a scenario. Put it out there. You guys tell me what you think in the comments. Uh, he's going to announce, because Leotis was supposed to be at uh, Lordstown week. Obviously, he isn't going to be there now. Uh, but anyway, the point is um, uh, they were going to announce some type of financial deal maybe uh, during the uh, Lordstown week. And uh, there was a revolt by... Uh, the staff, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the senior staff sold a bunch of their stock. It was weird. Uh, it seems like maybe a mutiny. Uh, Schmidt and the head of engineering, uh, both of those guys uh, are arm in arm on this, along with the board member, um, the woman that's uh, taking over, along with the with the COO uh, that's taking over in the interim. So they're all lockstep on this. So it looks like there was. They turned on this whole idea of involving Camping World in the company for whatever reason. Maybe they felt, well, they had limited resources and they wanted, I think, you know, that Burns wanted to shoot the moon and go for it all. And I think, uh, you know, Leonis was going to give him some, uh, perhaps some money. I don't know this. Uh, and they were going to do a public offering. But, you know, this would have given them a more... Uh, couple other income streams uh, you know the van and they could have sold the truck and the van th uh, the van would have been through Camping World and also they could sell the pickup truck through Camping World um, it, it all seemed to make sense to me as I said RV owners or pickup truck owners maybe they thought it would damage the brand maybe they just thought it wasn't feasible in the face of everything um, not being able to raise, maybe they didn't feel they could raise the money, or maybe they got the word from whoever. But I think definitely uh, this this is an issue that took part of this. And uh, the, the point is uh, the uh, the whole thing with Camping World. Um, it's it's a big part of this. No one's coming out and saying it. But I'd um, love to get the G. Uh, anybody got any in inside information out there? Let's have some uh, comments. Let's find out what's going on. Anyway, that's my take on it. Okay, here's a piece from uh, Green Car Reports on the uh, Camping World Leotis uh, CEO, their partnership. Anyway, Lordstown Endurance Electric pickup truck will spawn electric RV project with Camping World, okay? Uh, anyway, uh, announced a business relationship. Uh, some of them call it a, a, a venture, a joint venture. You know, it's hard to say. Anyway, the point is, uh, here's called uh, partnership. Uh, it includes initially plans to provide an integrated lift-on for travel trailers uh, that would eliminate the need for uh, noisy standalone generators um, and um, also uh, Camping World is going to be a service and collision network for the endurance and um, so you could see they were they were getting pretty integrated there. Uh, this is a 
a big press event they had. I covered this in some of my other videos. There are two of them there. And um, anyway, the point is, that's what was going on. And this is what they are stopping. And you can see here's a Winnebago. Ooh, there we go. And then uh, let's see here. We can get the, uh, there's the endurance. So anyway, there's a, there's a Winnebago. I guess that's, and there's Leotis and uh, uh, that's the Camping World CEO. And, uh, and there's the endurance. Anyway, um, I've done another video on this. I suspect that Camping World might come in uh, with some money for them or something else. But anyway, the point is, this, I think, is the wedge that, uh, that uh, drove uh, Burns out. And I think that the CFO was, you know, sacrificial lamb. Um, anyway. I don't know, perhaps he and Burns were in on this together and they joined forces. This is what it seems like to me anyway. I don't know. I'm just trying to use some deductive reasoning here. Tell me what you think in the comments. But anyway, uh, that's that. Okay, here's a little bit more background on Lordstown. This is a really recent article here, and I just wanted to point out a couple things. It Lords explains it has a lot of real orders, too. And this is from June 16, 21 at 8 a.m. Uh, talking about Steve Schmidt's orders. Uh, you know, we have enough for 21 and 22. We have 400K, uh, they say 400K, 500K left uh, in cash. Um, this is their estimate. Uh, 15, 20,000 units. We can guess there must be at least 15,000 of those are for, 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 for firm orders. Uh, I don't know what that is. I remember when they first started, they said they had 30K firmer for firm orders. Firm orders. Okay. So, um, I don't know. Maybe they're, you know, who knows with the SEC breathing down their neck. And again, this has never been built. This has never been sold. There's never been an electric pickup truck. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Okay. Uh, the price is going to go up. And after a tax credit, it's going to be forty-seven fifty. Now, it says here, uh, go with the Ford F-150 Lightning for thirty-nine nine, which is forty k, which is less, you know, $7,500 less. Or the Cybertruck for thirty-nine nine. Okay. These are not not the same vehicles i'll just point out two things it takes 10 hours to charge an f-150 on a on a 220 line okay forever you run this battery out during the work day you're finished okay and uh, the cyber truck this is the one motor uh thing uh, cyber truck not 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 all-wheel drive and this also is not real all four-wheel drive as the uh, endurance has and um, also these two trucks again I'm going to bring this up neither one of them has a solid rear axle I do not believe they can handle any real work situation without a solid rear axle they got a suburban it's essentially the same suspension they have in a suburban okay I don't know. Anyway, they got 250 miles of range on the Endurance, 109 kilowatt battery. Here's the thing. AC charging, 11 kilowatt onboard charger, 10 hours. Okay, AC. DC fast charging, 39 minutes. Okay. Uh, and towing capacity, 7,500 pounds. But the point is, the, di the real difference here is the battery efficiency and uh, the curb weight, which is going to relate to wear and tear, the the Ford truck is very heavy, and uh, also the charging times are better on the um, endurance. And I'm sure there's a lot of you out there that are better experts than me on the charging thing. I, again, can't be bothered with those, with the minutia. <laughs> All right. Anyway, I just wanted to bring that up. Okay. In a lot of my article uh, videos, I talk about the risk profile, uh, not 
risk management in an accounting sense necessarily, but I'm talking about the personality of the person. I, I think that uh, I did a little recruiting back in the day. Anyway, uh, I think matching the risk profile of the candidate to the risk profile of the company is critical for the success of that person's career and for the success of that company. Anyway, and, uh, uh, so I found this 16 personalities. I'm going to see if I could find a better uh, example, but this is planning the risk by personality type, okay? Blah, 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 blah. And uh, you tend to take risk without thinking about the consequences. Probably not the best question to ask for our purposes here, but I just wanted to show you. Um, give you an idea of what I was talking about. I'm going to see if I can find a better example than this. Uh, executives, uh, in a plain uh, tone here, are what? 30% of executives are high risk profile. Entrepreneurs, almost 60%. Okay. These are rough percentages. My lines aren't that good. The point is, uh, Burns and Leotis, the head of Camping World, are they have an entrepreneurial bent. They have a much higher risk profile. They're shoot the moon, get out over your skis, you know, crash and burn, make it to the moon or crash and burn kind of guys. You know, the people that have taken over now, Schmidt. Uh, the head of engineering, I'm sorry, I forgot his name. Um, I haven't looked into the background of the board member, but she's involved in fleet management. Anyway, I would, uh, I would category, categorize these guys more as more of the executive class, uh, more conservative, definitely a lower risk profile. When you talk about Schmidt and, and the head of engineering, definitely less, definitely less risk profile. And I don't want to be anti-feminist here or anti-women, but women tend to have a lower risk profile than men. It's just their personality types, I feel. I think that's borne out by research, too. But the point is, what, you, what you've had here at, at Lordstown is you've had a shift from the entrepreneurial spirit uh, to, uh, you know, a more conservative spirit. I'm just going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to say, I think uh, Burns and Leotis were going to do the dog and pony show and shoot the moon. I don't know. That's one scenario that could have been happening. And they were going to go for funding and um, do the whole enchilada. And uh, the board, I think uh, some of the top executives might have revolted against this. And uh, this is my soap opera version. And... Um, gone to the board and uh, the board, uh, you know, told the board decided these guys were out over their skis and they wanted to put the kibosh on the whole thing uh, before um, Lordstown. Um, anyway, so you've got lower risk. Now, uh, let me see, I wrote this down. Fortunes can favor the bold. I'll just tell you, I did a story, and also, now they have this uh, government uh, advanced manufacturing uh, techniques loan coming up that they're trying to get as well, okay? And um, they might be doing housekeeping for that as well um, by uh, pushing Burns out and, uh, and the CFO and uh, focusing the efforts and so forth. Now, the thing is, and bringing in a professional manager. I just want to say, I did a, a video on Aptera, or it's actually Aterra, it's supposed to be pronounced, which is the three-wheeled vehicle, which I am a fan of, three-wheeled electric vehicle. Sandy Monroe's on board with that. But anyway, the point is, uh, the first iteration of Aptera was going for this loan as well. And Ford got billions in this, and this was under the Obama administration. Ford got billions. Tesla got half a billion. Okay. So Aptera was basing their whole emphasis on getting this loan, which 
Lordstown may also be doing. And what they did was they brought in, a, a, you know, a professional uh, manager from a, a CEO, executive from uh, uh, the auto industry. They forced out the founders uh, again. Uh, and um, now here's the key we're going to watch for in Lordstown. And this may have already happened. What happened at Aterra is they deviated from the vision of the founders and they switched the course of the company to uh, developing a four-wheel vehicle. They felt that that would give, put them in better stead to get this loan. And um, basically, they did not go bankrupt. They liquidated, okay? As you know, I've seen some YouTubers saying, Lordstown's gonna go bankrupt. Lordstown can't go bankrupt. It doesn't have any debt, okay? Anyway, the point is, um, Aptera followed this same. Now, you know, the question is, was Burns the one changing the, the role of the company or and they're bringing it back to the original thought or um, I don't know. I think with a more uh, varied income streams and better capacity util utilization at the plant, you know, um, taking the competition to other sectors and not just in the in the pickup truck sector um, you weigh that against you know the company going broke or whatever so what do you do you shoot the moon or do you uh, go conservative um, I don't know you know it is what it is um, Steve Burns was a target of you know Jim Cramer and his ilk I don't know why there isn't a counterpoint to Jim Cramer. Why why doesn't Jim Cramer why isn't why aren't his uh, statements challenged? Why don't they have a counterpoint on that program? Why don't we say Jim, I don't agree with you. Blah blah blah. No one ever counters anything he says and you got to realize that's NBC Ford for example spends 2 billion dollars on advertising. You get my drift. Anyway, I just wanted to go over this whole risk profile thing because I think um, I'm I'm personally interested in it. But it just goes to show you what the shift was. Okay, so you're going from so from high risk uh, high risk tolerance uh, senior management to moderate risk or low risk uh, senior management. Uh, so you know, at what stage is this company? Is it does it does it need a high risk manager? Or is it at the point now where they can take it down to a moderate risk manager? It's 10 months old. I don't know. Of course, it's been doing one year per month in development. Maybe we could say it's 10 years old. I don't know. Anyway, we are de-risking. And again, this is an accounting term. I'm not talking about accounting, although the CFO might have gone because he didn't report this risk uh, too clearly to the board as well. But anyway, the point is, uh, they're de-risking and uh, well, they're uh, they're going conserving, conserving cash and so forth. I think, uh, like I said, Steve Burns wanted to shoot the moon and go for it all, and um, the board said we're not going to do that. You know, perhaps this is one scenario. We're going to go conservative. We're going to go for this loan. This is our best bet right now. We got 250 million or more on the line, and again. Aptera did the same thing, or Aterra did the same thing, did not get the loan. Okay. Makes perfect sense for this company to get the loan. Will it? I don't know. In, in the last go around, they favored Ford. Ford's developing electric vehicles. If Ford's in it for this loan, huh. uh, anyway. That's just my two cents on that. Okay, I just wanted to go down the rabbit hole a little bit here. Um, I want to talk about Smedley Butler. Has anyone ever heard of Smedley Butler? Smedley Butler was the, is one of the most decorated soldiers in American history. I think he won the Medal of Honor twice. He's fought in all kinds of wars. He fought in World War I. Uh, during the 30s, he was approached uh, by a group of Wall Street bankers 
and prominent businessmen with a plot to overthrow the country. And I'm just going to give you a summary here. We'll go over some details in a minute. Anyway, they came to him. Uh, they said, you know, and he was well known as a stand-up guy and a, a war hero. And he fought for soldiers' pensions and other things. And he was a really good good dude. Anyway, the point is, uh, they come to him, these backroom guys, and they uh, say, uh, you know, you know, we're going to give you a, a million dollars to organize, and that was a lot of money back then, to, uh, or they wanted to, him to use his uh, stature to organize a group of uh, half a million uh, veterans, and they wanted to uh, oust uh, FDR, and because they were, they were PO'd because uh, the FDR wanted to go off the gold standard, and because uh, he was giving things to the poor people and giving people jobs. You know, and uh, this is true, and this is all a true story. I advise you all to to research this. And um, what Smedley did was he went along with them, and then uh, until he got evidence, and he brought someone with him. There's a whole story behind this. Then he went to Congress, and there were congressional hearings about this whole thing. And at the time, and up until recently, really, this. This was all considered a laughing stock. It was all made up and everything, uh, as it says in this article in the twenty in the in the recent century or so. Secret files have come out that said this was all true. And um, the thing is, there is a number of Fortune fifty, Fortune one hundred companies behind this plot. There were many major Wall Street banks behind this plot. Um, basically, the same players that are, 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 I feel, behind the, a lot of this static that uh, Lordstown Motors. So I'm just saying, if you don't think that Wall Street and corporate America can get behind an issue and throw their weight around, you're sadly mistaken. I've done a lot, you know, I was interested in this story years ago, and I found um, uh, a lot of information at that time, and it was very easy to find lists of the companies that were involved and the individuals that were involved in this. I tried to find some for this piece last couple of days, I, you know, I don't know where they are. It's almost as if they've been scrubbed from uh, the internet. And I don't know if there's been, uh, you know, lawsuits or cease and desist or what. Anyway, uh, we'll just go through this real quick. Uh, 34 claim, blah, 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 plot to overthrow President Franklin Roosevelt with in favor of a fascist government. And that was in 34. Uh, they wanted to use Smedley Butler most decorated hero of his time. Uh, expected names like Grayson, I don't know who these people are, and Prescott Bush. I'm not going to mention that name too many times. And uh, anyway, uh, he was the eldest of a Quaker family. He joined the Marines when he was 16 years old. The Marines actually have a, a marching song they sing to uh, Smedley Butler, an ode to Smedley Butler. He worked, uh, he, he was a soldier in the Boxer Rebellion in World War I. Multiple medals of honor, okay. Here he is right here, here's Smedley, a real stand-up guy. And uh, a good dude all around, a real hero, real patriot. Anyway, here's the business plot. Uh, Butler was approached by Zero New and Bob Doyle. McGuire, a bond salesman, and, and Doyle, uh, members of the American Legion, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and they approached him with a million dollars to raise a half million man army. Prescott Bush, one of the men implicated. I'm not going to say that name again. Um, and here's some talk about that. Departure from the gold standard and other concerns about FDR's policies, particularly his plan to provide subsidization and jobs for the poor. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's one of the 
one of the names mentioned here, Sterling, an heir to the Singer Sewing Fortune. And um, the, only, the only way to save uh, the country from FDR was a coup. Uh, military state uh, run by former servicemen. Um, and they gave um, Spedley Butler financing and an army of half a million men and financial backing from an assortment of rich businessmen. Okay. Uh, McGuire told Frank, he believed the fascist state, this is the witness that um, Smedley brought to the meeting, one of the meetings. A fascist state was the only answer to America, and that Smedley was the ideal leader. He could organize one million men overnight. Okay? Uh, here's one of the guys that was involved, a partner with J.P. Morgan. Okay? Uh, quickly becoming known as the White House coup and Wall Street push. I don't know what that work is. I'm sorry. Uh, those implicated ranging from the DuPont family to Prescott, I keep saying that name, laughed off Butler's claims. And, and he was routinely laughed off as, as they blew this off as a big joke and it was all a figment. Okay. Evidence of the validity of Butler's testimony was not released until the 21st century when the committee's papers were published in the public domain. No one was ever prosecuted in connection to the plot. Anyway, the point is, uh, the reason I'm bringing this up is, you guys can do your own research and find out, get the, I'm not going to put it on here, I don't, I don't want to deal with it, but anyway, these names are in the public domain. They say, I can't find them, but find a copy of this report. Look and see what companies were involved, what Wall Street banks were involved. Now, what's the point of all this? You know, <laughs> go down the rabbit hole. All I'm saying is, if people want to get together that are in these power structures and they want to put pressure on a company or a person or a politician uh, if you don't think they can do it, they can do it, okay? And in the case of um, Lordstown Motors, it's a threat to Ford, uh, a major threat to Ford. And, um, you know, that's a company that spends $2 billion a year on advertising. So think about that. Anyway, just wanted to let you know, again, you know, I did anatomy of a short in one of my last videos. Uh, look up Smedley Butler. Check out Smedley, a true American pa patriot, one of my personal heroes. Hey, this is MXUX. I hope you guys like going down the rabbit hole with me. Of course, there's the normal explanation of SEC investigation, short southern report, and mismanagement at the executive level. Anyway, give me your thoughts below. I think there might be a little bit of truth in this video. Uh, I want to apologize for the last video. I had some incorrect information in there. Anyway, I hope you guys liked the video. I'm really curious on what your thoughts are. Uh, they're being a bit mysterious about everything. Maybe there's some... Uh